Well, what's good, what's good, well, listen, as you probably noticed, I'm in my favorite room of my whole house. And the reason I'm here is because what better place to talk about the last of the five keys, the five pillars to being magnificent and having a magnificent life. And as you probably noticed, and by the way, grab a pad and paper because you know how we roll up in here. I'm not going to just talk to you about stuff. I'm going to give you something to do. And this is the one, this last one here is the one that ties it all together. This is the one that literally doesn't just make you feel good in the moment, but this is the one, this is the pillar that all of them are important, but this is probably the most important one with regard to creating what I call geometric growth and making this a loop that one feeds the other and you just grow and grow and go further faster in your life. Now, as you probably notice, I'm surrounded. My, you can't see the other side, but there's another six of them on the other side, but all these beauties around me. Uh, and, and obviously you might think, well, this is my favorite room because of all these beauties, but I set it up here this way. And you may not be you know, into to basses and guitars and things like that that I am, but you're into something that is going to help you, let's say accentuate or elevate this last pillar, and that last pillar is joy. That's right, joy. Now, let me preframe this by saying, if you're an achiever or overachiever or super entrepreneur and somebody that's very aggressive and you're looking for something, you might think to yourself, well, this is, you know, this is too soft and this is too, uh, you know, rainbows and butterflies and things like that, chill. Because I'm here to tell you, I'm going to give you an example here in a moment, that achievers that do not aggressively go after this particular pillar live in much more stress. And if you live in much more stress, you're going to operate differently. Excuse me. You're going to operate less than is, let's just say, optimal to get your outcome. Said differently, you're going to get to where you want faster by having more joy in your life. And so, as I said before, grab a pad and paper because I'm not going to just talk. I'm going to give you something to do. And so I'm going to talk about what joy is first. And by the way, this subject is so important and it is, it is so often overlooked that I actually wrote a book about it several years ago, a few years ago, called Get Happy Now, where myself and my team it did extensive research and dug deep into Harvard studies and, and things to recognize that happier people, that people that are joyful, not only are healthy people, healthier people, but they get more done. They have more, uh, more abundance in their lives and everything that comes along with it. They're sharper and all the things that come along with it. I'm not going to go into that. You can go read the book, but all of those things in there. But let me talk to you about what I consider joy is. Joy is that emotion, that feeling that we get when we look to the past, present, or future of things that make our, make our brain release what I call dopamine. And we look to the past, present, and future of things that we were successful with, things that we're happy about, things that we approve, and things that we love. It's the emotion that is produced when we seek out those things, when we look for those things, consciously and unconsciously. And from that emotion, it causes our body to feel a certain way. It causes our, our, our more emotion. It causes us to do different things than we normally would do. Joy. And joy comes in a bunch of different ways. I'm in this room right here right now because this brings me joy. This, when I come in here, I'm anchored to it. I'll talk to you about that here in a second. As soon, and even just the thought about it, I get excited about it. And anytime I get excited, there's that release of, of the endorphins, dopamines, the oxytocin, and all that stuff that makes me feel good, which in the moment, all you got to do is think about it. In the moment, aids in whatever whatever uh, project you're doing or anything that you're doing in the moment, whatever you're doing, it takes it off. Now, here's what I want you to understand is that I'm going to go back on one of the studies. That I, I'm not sure if it was Harvard or, or, uh, or Stanford or whatever, but it was a study that was done uh, about, uh, uh, because oftentimes, you know, and often maybe why you're here is you want to achieve more. You want to be more wealthy, if you will, wealthy as being healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And, and so, uh, you know, maybe you're at that stage in your life where you're working really hard to make some things happen and everything. But here's what I've, I have uh, witnessed and what I've noticed and I've experienced across the board. And by the way, I did it myself. And that is high stress levels of achievers because we don't have what we want yet. And we believe that we got to grind, grind, grind. As a matter of fact, I hear people talking about it all the time. I'm on my grind. Well, listen, if you're on your grind, grind is stress. 
And so, and that's okay. You got to do it. That's the, the dance between stress and release, stress and release. That's part of life and everything. But most people stress, 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 stress. And the way that they release is alcohol or smoking some weed or, or, or doing something that is not productive or something that is destructive to their nervous system and to their physical body as well. And then there's a price to pay for it. You got hangovers and you got, you know, dead, dead zones inside and you damage your brain and your liver and all that stuff as well. And again, I'm not throwing you under the bus. And I'm not telling you that this is something you have to stop doing. I am saying mitigate it. And, uh, and as you do this, you're going to find out. Uh, you're going to find out that it, it's going to aid you. And anyway, the study was done. I'm just going to abbreviate it, if you will. The study was done where they took, uh, they call them longshore workers. And these are people that unload the cargo off of ships. Now, this is several years ago. So there was a lot, there was a lot more physical labor in these men and women. And they took a, a crew of people. And they, they did a control group, group and they did another group of people as well. And they took these people, let's just say there were 10 or 15 men uh, and women, and they said, here's what we're going to do. You're going to start your day at 8 a.m. in the morning. You're going to work straight through until noon. You're going to take an hour lunch and you're going to come back and you're going to work from noon, or from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Okay? And that's basically an eight-hour day Yeah, that a lot of people work. And, and that's normal, so these people do. And what they did was they measured... And they counted up how much work these people got done. In this case, it was how much they got unloaded or how much uh, uh, cargo they, they moved from one place to another. And then they took that same group of people and then they said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going, uh, uh, excuse me, they took another group of people and they said, okay, for you people, what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to start your work at 8 a.m. in the morning. You're going to work for 40, I'm sorry, for 50 minutes. Then you're going to take a 10 minute break. Then you're going to work for 50 minutes. You're going to take a 10 minute break, 50 minutes, 10 minute break. And they do this up until noon. Noon, you're going to have an hour lunch. And then after that hour lunch, you're going to come back 50 minutes, 10, 50 minutes, 10, all the way till five o'clock. And at the end of the day, they measured how much they did. They, they weighed out or whatever they did to see how much work uh, these people got done. And do you know that the people that, that took the 10 minute breaks did almost 25% more, produced more, almost 25% more than the ones that worked all the way through. And then they switched it. They took the ones that had worked all the way through and they gave them 10 minute breaks every 50 minutes, hour off, 10 minute breaks. Every, and they gave the other ones, they had them work eight o'clock in the morning till 12, 12 till one, um, 12 to one, they took a lunch and then, you know, come back and finish it out. And just the same thing happened. The ones, even though they were used to working eight hours a day the other way, as soon as they took a 10 minute break, then, then guess what? They developed, they, they increased their uh, output and their productivity by 50, I'm sorry, by 25% as well. Now, I'm sorry, it was 20 to 25%. Now, the obvious question is, well, what the hell did they, you know, that you're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, that 10 minutes off, you know, that's great. But the question is, what did they do during those 10 minutes? Aha, uh -huh. that is the, 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 the important thing for you to know. What they had those people do, actually had them do a myriad of things. They had them meditate, things, and so on and so forth. But one of the things that they had them do was just to go through a couple of rituals of these two things, gratefulness and joy. And what they did was they had them just think about, and they played some music, just think about the things that brought them joy, their families, playing bass guitar or whatever it was. And they played the music and they just had them for 10 minutes do that, you know, drink some water and just relax for 10 minutes. And what happens if you go back to pillar number three is it gives them energy. It gives them, it, 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 it replenishes them. It gives them electricity. And that electricity moves into, uh, it gets them to, to do more. They feel more like doing things. They have more joy. But here's the great part about it. They did this for several, several months. And then when they put both of the groups back on eight hours a day, in the very beginning, they were, they were productive, but it fell off. It fell off. And these people, but the people in general started to be, they were happier, healthier people across the board. Now, why do I share that with you? It's because it's important that you practice, if you, you know, it doesn't have to be that regimented, but at least once in your day, you take some time where you, wait for it, go somewhere to be joyful. Let me repeat myself. You go somewhere to be joyful. It may be your car. It may be a music studio. It may be, you know, wherever it is for you that you go somewhere else to be joyful. Now, I have people, and you may be this, you know, you're listening to this and you go, well, Joseph, I got a job all day long. That's great. Okay. But 
you know, take some time to go find a little place. And I say, and the reason I brought you in here, the reason I'm doing this is to create a sanctuary, create a place that you have that you can go where it's just you and you're going to do the following what I tell you what to do. And this is really, really important that you get this. Let me, before I tell you uh, uh, how to create it, let me tell you why this is important and why it works so well. And that is this. Uh, in all of the, all of the uh, pillars that I've been talking about, our reward and praise and all of those things are the things that cause our brain to go, hey, let's do more of it. And the way that that works is as soon as you feel something good at all, your brain releases chemicals, dopamine, endorphins, and, and things like that that make you feel good. But here's the beauty of it. As soon as that happens, the brain automatically goes, it looks for what just happened right before that release of, uh, of, the, of the hormone. And it attaches that feeling to whatever happened right before. And so the brain goes, because remember, we're always looking for joy. We're always looking to be better. We're always mo moving from, from pain to pleasure. We're always moving from stress to release. That's the way we are. We're looking uh, to, to feel better all the time. Every, that's part of who we are. That's what makes us human beings. And so the brain goes, okay, an easiest path is, wow, that just made us feel good. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And when you reward yourself and when you have joy, guess what? It attaches it to any and everything around. It doesn't judge. It just goes, this is it. This is great. And this is why you can understand why some people attach joy to things that are destructive to them as well. Because if they get any kind of release from it at all, you know, smoking cigarettes or, or weed or drinking, drinking alcohol and stuff. And again, I'm not throwing you under the bus. I'm just saying, and I'm not throwing shade on you. I'm just saying that if, it's, if there's anything at all that's destructive to you and you know it and you continue to do it is because you have attached some meaning to it that makes you feel better, makes you bring, feel some kind of joy. And your brain automatically goes, let's just do more of that. That's the quickest way there. So instead, there's shortcuts, there's hacks, there's things around it to do it. And so... Um, you know, I always, I always tell people, listen, my methodology is a bit unorthodox. If you get a fear of dogs and you come into my office, there's going to be a dog in there. And at the end of that session, you're going to hold the dog, you're going to love the dog and everything. And I'm going to get there very, very quickly using the processes and the things that I'm talking to you about right now. But the biggest piece of it is, it's not just, you know, when they finally hold the dog, they go, okay, finally. At the end of that, there's so much joy that we attach to them. And there's a way that you can capture joy. It's called, the, it's called anchoring and triggering. You're going to learn it here in a moment. You can capture joy and, and access it any time that you want. And so when that person comes into my office and, and he, he or she doesn't know that there's a dog in there and they get a fear of dogs, what I have done before they come into my office, sometimes I do it on the phone, sometimes I do it in person, is I capture joy for them. And it's really, really simple. I want you to get this. If you've had any psychology classes, probably one of the things that you learned very early on was something called uh, conditioned response. And that was Pavlov's dog. Ivan Pavlov took a dog, showed him food, tied the dog up, the dog was hungry, uh, showed him the food, and when the dog saw the food, the dog would drool, and Pavlov would ring a bell. Show the food, dog would drool, ring a bell. Show the food, dog would drool, ring a bell. Until pretty soon, all he had to do, even after the dog had been fed, all he had to do was ring the bell, and the dog would drool. So what he did was he replaced the food and the reaction to the food with a bell. Now, this is basic psychology, if you will. It's kind of psychology 101, but it just works. And so you want to do the same thing. And so what I do with these people is, is I'll, you know, I'll go through and I'll say, what, what brings you your most joy? Let's go there. Let's think about it. And when they do, I'll have them squeeze their fist and, and say yes. Now, all I'm doing is, is when they're thinking about joy, squeeze their fist and say yes. Or I may touch them on their shoulder or something like that. I may snap my finger. I may say something. But every time they do that, they feel it. Whatever's, whatever's around, just like the bell, they become attached to. So when they walk into the room and there's a dog there and I interrupt their pattern, I fire off that anchor and they feel joy while they're in the presence of the dog. Now, I know I went through that very, very quickly. You don't have to know all that stuff, but just know that it works. Um, and so the, what you want to do is the same thing is that you want to capture as much joy. First off, get yourself a sanctuary. I don't care. I have people that, that, make, that make a closet that they go into. This is my little space that I'm going to go to. I have people that make it, it's their car that they go into, or they go for a walk, or they do something. Whatever it is that you can consistently go to and trigger joy. And joy, the, 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 one of the paths to joy is something called gratefulness. Gratefulness. You know, my mentors taught me that gratefulness was not just being thankful for things, but gratefulness means being 
full of great, uh, I'm sorry, having great fullness of things that bring you joy. And what that means is, is just think about the stuff that you have, think of the stuff that you've accomplished and so on and so forth, squeeze your fist and say yes. And when you do, what happens is you'll feel it. So for instance, I don't just come in here and grab one of these beauties and slap it around like it just stole something from my grandmother. What I do is I come in here because this brings me joy and I'm anchored to all of these things. But while I'm here, I think about things that I'm grateful for. Matter of fact, I have a grateful ritual that I do when I wake up in the morning and I come in here and I do it. Because gratefulness is the antidote to any fear. Gratefulness is the quickest route to joy. It really is. And you, you know, because oftentimes you'll sit down and you'll think about, okay, what brings me joy? What brings me joy? But you're confused and you're searching for it right now. Just think about what you're grateful for. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, if they're still with us and the things like that, things that you've done, things that you've had, that kind of thing. Things that make you joy. And when you think about it, anytime you get that feeling, remember, because joy is an emotion. And an emotion is triggered by what? What you focus on, what you search for. And so when you're searching for it and you find it, put a smile on your face and go, yes, that feels good. And just go, yes, that feels good. And then what you're going to have is in your fist and in that voice right there, the ability to, to track back to it and get to it every time. And the beauty of it is, is you're going to use this, once you build it up, you're going to use this to reward yourself as well. And what happens is you're going to find yourself, because remember, when you start, when you, I, I, I probably said this to you before, and that is the searching process is the rewiring process of your brain. The searching process, as you're looking for something, you're making, you're creating new neuro associations. Your brain is actually activating and co making connections inside your brain uh, when you do that. And once you do that, it starts to be stronger and stronger, and it's an easier pathway to get there. And so, as you're doing this more and more, you get better and better at it because of human physics. And the great part about it is this, I keep saying it, the great part, the, an even greater part about it is this, is that you emit joyful energy. People like to be around you and you attract stuff more into your life as you will. Remember what I said, we did so much research on this stuff. And you probably notice I'm a pretty happy guy as well. So the quickest way to get there is, is gratefulness. But then even quicker way to get there, watch this. This is extremely complicated. You might not be able to do this, but I want you to try it. Watch this, because it causes the body to feel joy, even though you're not, you might not say, consciously feel it. Watch this. See that? That is the beginning of the, second, of the next thing, but that is the beginning. When you smile, your brain, you remember, we're all physically linked together, and your body and your brain releases that dopamine as soon as you smile. You can do that, can't you? Try it out. Go. Now, by the way, if you go like that and keep it like that, and you try and think of something depressing or sad, you can't do it. If, if you do get depressed or sad, you'll go like this, and it'll come off of your face. Your face is directly linked to everything around you. And so, as you do that, then you, you can also move to the second thing, and this is uh, again, uh, one of my favorite things to talk about, and that is laughter. Laughter. Because there's a physiological, well, just like the other, there's a physiological reason why it brings you joy, why it makes you smarter, why it makes you healthier, and all those things. Laughter is the coolest thing on the planet with regard to helping you go further faster. Wouldn't you rather uh, joyfully achieve what you want, happily achieve what you want, or do you want to stress over it? If you stress over it, just like those dock workers, it's going to take you longer. If you joyfully go after it, even though it's, even though in the moment you're not necessarily thinking about what makes you joyful, but if you take the time to do that, here's what happens as you become, you create more joy. But laughter, find a time every day, every day I find something to laugh out loud about. And for me, you know, everybody's got a different sense of humor, whatever yours is, some of you are sick. <laughs> uh, and you find something to make you laugh because when we laugh, just the basic physics are that you remember there, there's that saying laughter is the best medicine years ago i read a book by a dr norman cousins and dr norman cousins i uh, was one of the first people and this is back in the 80s uh, that uh, helped heal himself and other people of chronic and even life-threatening diseases and even terminal diseases through laughter and i remember reading this book and he kind of outlined it but as i started as i studied uh, a little bit more, I started to realize why it is. Because in order for you to laugh, you have to breathe. You have to breathe diaphragmically. You, you have to breathe correctly, if you will. And as soon as you do, number one, when you're laughing, you get the dopamine release and all the things that I just said before, you're triggering your brain to look for what just happened and do more of it. But the other thing is, is you get the most important thing that's in your life with regard to you staying alive and thriving. And that is oxygen, oxygen. Listen, you can go 
couple weeks with no food, you can go you know, a few days without any water, but you can only go about three minutes without oxygen. You don't have oxygen, you take a dirt nap, it's over. And so it's the most important thing. And for most people, when we're stressed, we're shallow breathing, we're, you know, breathing up here, we're taking short breaths and that kind of thing. But as soon as you laugh, you gotta, that kind of thing, you gotta laugh, you gotta, you gotta take diaph diaphragmic breaths. It sends oxygen through your brain at the same time it's releasing dopamine through your system and your body goes, I want more of this. Laughter. As ye seek, so shall ye find. Look for things that make you laugh. And by the way, remembering other old things that made you laugh as well. Seek it. Look out. Look for it. You know, if you're going to watch television, um, I encourage you to, at least in your repertoire of things that you're going to watch, find something that really makes you laugh. Not situation comedies where there's canned laughter on there that's telling you when to laugh and you hardly ever laugh. But find something that's going to make you laugh. Uh, you know, on, on Netflix, you're going to find comedians all over the place or, or whatever, you know, play with your puppy, do whatever it takes to do that because laughter is the best medicine. It truly is. My mother, now, by the way, it was, uh, shortly after I read that book uh, by Dr. Norman Cousins, my mother was diagnosed with terminal intestinal cancer, terminal. They said she was going to have about two months to live. And A, I didn't let them tell that to her, but that's what they told me. And one of the things that I did was I got her in there, even though she was cut from here down to here, uh, I had her laughing right away, right away. And I'm such a big believer in that, that the body heals itself as well. The body wants more and more of it. And after a while, my mom, you know, and it was difficult for her to laugh for a little bit. I told her, here's why we're doing this. And she started to seek it out for herself. And it was funny. We'd sit there and we'd just talk about, you know, silly things, just crazy things. And that's where the focus went. And every time I'd touch her and every time I'd ever squeeze her fist and say yes. My mom lived another 11 and a half years cancer free. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen to you or anybody else. I'm just saying that doing the same thing that we've always done and believing what we've always believed is going to get the same result. Doing something different that carries with it not just the promise of, but evidence, evidence of going further faster is the smarter thing to do. And so here's what you do. Number one, find a sanctuary. Create a sanctuary that you can spend maybe 10 minutes. If it's just 10 minutes a day, it's still going to help you better. Find somewhere where you can go where you can be by yourself and you can just focus on gratefulness and joy. Number two, write it down. You know how I roll. What you write is what you invite. What you write is what you invite. What you don't is what you won't. Write it down. Any and everything that you can think of that makes you happy. Places that you've been, people that you've met, events that you've had, you know, trips that you've taken, whatever. Joy, 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 joy. And then write down things that you're grateful about. Every single day, take five or ten minutes and just write it down. Go to that place and sit down and just do it. Use your brain. Remember, we are in training here. Magnificence training. And so as you do that, what happens is you start to grow. And the reason why this is in this position of the five, and remember, I didn't go over the five. Number one is integrity. That means doing what you say you're going to do. Number two is tenacity. That means continue to do what you say you're going to do. Number three is energy. That means generate the electricity that's going inside. Number four is is kindness. Be kind to other people and kind to yourself. And then number five, joy. Reward yourself for having done all of those other things. And you're more apt to, and you're more likely to do those things without having to force yourself to do it. And you're going to become healthier. You're going to become happier. You're going to become more abundant, whatever that work that means for you. And you're going to start to realize that you're a different person. And here's one of the other great things about it. And that is that other people want to be around you and other people enjoy you as well. And people say to you, say to themselves and say to other people, I don't know what it is about that freak, but they're always happy and I enjoy being around them. You know, I've got several friends. One of my dear friends, his name is Eddie Valenzuela. And Eddie, as, far, as long as I've known him, and he's had some amazing hardships in his life, but he's always got a smile on his face. He's always got a smile on his face. And I remember asking Eddie, I go, Eddie, what makes you so happy? And he goes, because a long time ago, you told me to be happy. And I go, I told you? And he goes, yeah. And he said, and by the way, he's, you know, it wasn't just me, but he practices that. He looks for what's joyful. He laughs all the time. Seek it and you find it. If you're the kind of person that's too cool to rule, this is <laughs> that kind of thing, get over it. You want to be happy. Listen, in the end, in the end, magnificence, magnificence is being happy. Magnificent people are happy people. You don't want to look at somebody, you don't want to look, you don't look at somebody that is sad and stressful and so on and so forth and say they have a magnificent life. On the contrary, you look at somebody and, and, and that doesn't mean your problems are going to go away. You know, one of the most joyful and funny and, and, and happy people that I know of, of, uh, I've never met either one of these two people, Kevin Hart, the comedian, and um, 
uh, what's his name with the, with the mask, uh, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. And when you think about these people, you know, they're comedians, obviously, but there's other comedians that are out there that are sarcastic. I, I, there was a guy, uh, oh gosh, Jesse, I think it was his name, I forget what his name was, but there are several comedians that are depressed and on drugs and so on and so forth that are sad and, and sarcastic and things like that and are not optimistic. Optimis optimistic means looking for options and finding options. But if you look at these two gentlemen and you go back and you look at their history because they talk about it now and they talk about, yeah, the things that they've done, you know, all in it, they're, they're all, you know, charities and things like that, they help people, they have all five of those things. And so all of these, all of them, the, these five pillars are important. And this is the one that you need to practice for the rest of your life, really, the rest of your life. I just bought this house that I'm in right now. And one of the first places that I, I put together was this room. Why? That's how important it is. That's how important it is. So what I encourage you to do is do the exercises, make a sanctuary, make your list of stuff and visit it every once in a while, along with the other exercises that you have. And then lastly, I got a free gift for you. And that is the gift that all of these, all of these uh, principles are outlined in with other exercises and things that you're going to do. Let me say this before I tell you what to do. Well, you, you can go to the link and get the book. Uh, and the book is free, by the way. Um, all of this is designed that we're in training right now. We are in training. My mentors always taught me that if you want an extraordinary life, if you want a magnificent life, training never stops. Athletes constantly train, you know, and there's such a great example, and it's the same for us. We got to keep training ourselves, and our, our time oftentimes is eaten up and, and, and uh, distracted by, you know, so many other things, and television, and, and social media, and all those other things, and, and necessary things like, you know, got to take the kids to soccer practice, and all those things. Take the time for yourself and do this. Take the time to do this. So a free book is called uh, Dare to be Magnificent, ironically. Uh, get the book. Just follow the link. Get down there. Get the book. We'll send it to you. It's absolutely free. I want you to have this. I want you to have it. You know, my life changed because somebody gave me a book. And I promised that person that I would do the same thing. And the book that they gave me was Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read it, go ahead and read the book. But I, uh, I promised him that I would do the same thing. When I asked him, how do I repay you for what you've done for me? Because he changed my life. He said, you do the same thing, Joseph. And so um, that's one of the reasons why I wrote this particular book as well, because I want you to have it. And, um, and not hopefully, but as you do it, it will, it will uh, change your life as well. The only thing I ask is that you do it and you share the information. Now, I'm not saying that you've got to share the information and show, I got this from Joseph McClendon, you got to go to the, no, share it, you, you can make it, you can make it, you can say it as though you made it up if you want. I don't care. Let's just make a difference in other people's lives. Lastly, like and subscribe and hit the notification button because uh, if you enjoyed this video, I got plenty more for you as well. And then lastly, lastly, remember this, life is exactly what you dare to make it and fortune favors the bold. So I'm going to boldly step up here and slap these things around. I love you, and I'll see you at the top.